72.5, a prayer of St. G. The years exceed those proclaimed by the Lord, three score and ten, so that what remains is gratis, there is nothing to lose. We confess that for God more is possible than exists in reality, that your power and thoughts extend beyond the world, and as we are made in your likeness, you can communicate to us a likeness of your holiness. This a necessary thing if we are ever to countenance you. You do not love those who are not holy, though they may say it is so as a common progeny upon the earth. You love yourself and some outside yourself in your good pleasure, and as in the affection of the three divine persons for each other. This not a proof of Trinity as a necessary prequel to love. Unto us are your goodness, your grace, loving kindness and mercy, long suffering as can be seen of us past 70 years of life, noting there must be a reason for our existence beyond our claim. In love you see, seek to lead the sinner to conversion, in mercy your pity toward the wretched, and we deserve punishment for our willful wait, waywardness. Yet this is postponed to your patient call to conversion of the remnant elect. Against every violation of your holiness, you show by righteousness that you are holy. In us, there is an overwhelming crisis, the crisis of sin. We have deviated from our destiny as children of God. In you there is blessedness, an inner sense of your perfection and glory. Your decrees are utterly unlimited and stand under no other rule than that of your own glorious virtues that themselves form your being. We ignorant people of the earth have lived these many decades without even considering that there are decrees of God which operate the world. We have become fuzzily used to some laws of physics and biology, but never have heard that you decree and execute all things. Of the internal workings of your being, we can know absolutely nothing. Of the external works of God, as evident as the sun, moon, and stars, we familiarly call nature. We cannot, as perhaps was true also of the fallen angels, Imagine the magnitude of your power and presence. What we call the world or universe is perhaps only a microcosm of what is. The potentialities are infinite. Thus shall we not listen to the extraordinary messages from you, taking all forms of natural phenomena, mathematics, music, art, virtually everything that exists, abstract or touchable taking beyond all imagination the very blood and life of the Son of God. By this we see that your emotion and thought are beyond human apprehension. Decree? We did not know that there were decrees. We did not want to know. We like to imagine that we have free will and the power to effect it. Yet if you have free will, how can we? Yours will always be sovereign over ours. Thus ours is not free. Also, we have no power against your power to cause anything to happen. We say, remember, man, that thou art just, but also should we press into our minds that your will is powerful enough to call from nothing a thing into being. The decree of God also embraces the free acts of man. This seems absurd and impossible, for it says that what is most important in world history would be beyond the control of God's decree. The entire course of the world abandoned to what is arbitrary. Are you then waiting to see what would be the outcome? We find that external certainty and moral freedom exclude each other. The certainty of your decree, any decree, may not be changed. One of these must give way, our freedom or your certainty. Our conception of human freedom forms around uncertainty and absolute chance. We look to the circumstances of Adam for some resolution. Adam was completely good and holy. Before the fall, he could transition both from evil to good and from good to evil. After Adam's fall, 
No man can produce good from evil, but can produce evil from good. Wondrously, a regenerated, saved person is unable to produce evil from good. We have been taken out from the world of black and white and into a world of pure light, which governs all we do. Our conscience tells us we must do what is good. Our sinful habits impel us to do what is evil. We sin because we have a sinful character, this against our own conscience, but not against our own will, our own character, for you have changed them. There is something in sinful man which is not compatible with sin, that protests against sin. But this is not something good in us. It is the voice of God within who speaks, who bears witness to what is right. We in our fallen state do not have free will because we must do what is evil against our better knowledge and the testimony of our conscience. Though we are slaves to sin, our conscience tells us that it is sin. Sin did not come from God, but receives its certainty from your decree. The sin of Adam and ours under your permissive will is an unsolvable problem. We determine that you can so act on us that we still act freely of ourselves. By your grace, you make some holy. Thus, in his unconscious life as a whole, he is holy. Our thoughts, words, and deeds are then holy, but no less free. That you are God ever divine, we are not God, never divine, but translated to your life. We continue our early, earthly life in non-divine flesh, while our spirit has been raised to the life of your spirit. Thus, it has been worth 72.5 years of confusion to begin to understand the revelations of my character, which lie beneath me, my free acts flowing from my inner character. We are responsible because our acts are exponents of our character, covered by your moral law, which is in all men. Rather than nullifying, free nullifying freedom, this causality is the true foundation of